McFarlane, 10, Dylan Brockett, 12, Sean Walker and 13, Raven Paiku. The wings, Tamati Moringa and Caleb Hidani Tate, 15, St Stefan Markland. The bench is a little bit bare, Tiari Wiari, Dion Wedita and Carl Gallagher. Today's referee is Matthew Martin from North Harbour. Conditions are pretty good. It's uh, coming, going with the sun. Matthew Martin says, let's kick off. Get this game underway. Is it's is a return kick from the 22. It's going down. It's a pretty decent kick there from Gregor Kistri. You might be able to see in the background there the assistant referee's flag waving about. So it has picked up, blowing left to right as you see it. Let us know who you're supporting, where you're watching from. Great to have your company alongside for this one, round two. Knockout comp, the second edition. It's Andre Markland to throw to the line out. And it's one there, it goes through to Brockett. Having to go back and clean it up, gets out of one. And it gets an offload to Sean Walker. Brought down and a bit of a high tackle is what Melville's claiming for, not given. Now it goes out to Matt Stewart. Brought down 10 metres inside Pukakoi's half. There for Brockett, fires it off to Walker. Brought down just sort of halfway. It's a nice little passing there for, from Joe McFarlane. As Brockett has to go into the tackle himself. All gone backwards is what Martin, the referee, has said. Brockett with a big fire out pass. It's been knocked backwards, is it? No, it's not. It's been knocked forward and then played in an offside position. So Pukakoi get a penalty and they're eight metres inside Melville's half. It's a chance here for the Pirates to clear the line. Make some more metres inside Melville's territory. And the flag from the assistant referee goes up a couple of metres short of the 22. And there for Jamie Bidwa to throw the line out. Kukaui Pirates finished fifth in the county's Manukau competition. And it's going to be tapped back here. But one there by Melville. And they've got it about 13 metres inside their own half now. Kick there from McFarlane. Good, some good chases on from Tamariti Maringa and Matt Stewart. Although there's an advantage being played for being in front of the kicker. Now it goes out left to one of the centres there for Pukakoi. Looks as though that was Parkinson. Caught five metres inside their own half at the moment, the Pirates. It's a good run here from Woodivan up towards the halfway. Tatsunu goes left. Comes out there now and some good metres being run, but he's just been dragged into touch. And Matthew Martin says, we'll go back to the, where the infringement happened, being in front of the kicker. Offside is the call. Man from North Harbour, been refereeing for five years now, enjoying his trade. Having a quick talk to him before kickoff today. If anyone's wondering uh, what this competition is all about, it's a national club competition, as the uh, under 85 kilos National Club Cup would suggest. It doesn't matter if uh, the club actually plays in a provincial competition. Just needs to be, all the players need to be under 85 kilos. They haven't played, uh, haven't been that weight for a few, for a while now. As the throw from Bidwa is over the top again. Going to be cleaned up there by Melville. Yes, it will. But Pukakoi pinched us back. Being fired out now through Parkinson. And it's going to be left behind by Mish. And go into touch and it'll be a Melville throw. Both sides at the moment having equal opportunities. But uh, not, nothing really being made of it. Pirates, Pukakoi Pirates just having the upper advantage at the moment. Markland with his second throw. And it's been run there by 
Hadfield goes to ground pretty quick with it. And no, no release in the tackle is the call. The Pirates have their third penalty. That'll give them some confidence. And now a chance to go into the 22. With a line-out throw, but the Jamie Bidwa struggling with the throwing at the moment. Not really due to the wind, just might be a little bit of nerves. They had the bye in the first round, while Melville managed to beat only Fido. Another county's Monaco team, 29-19. Winner of this game takes on Morrinsville on August 28th. Looks as though it's going to be a short throw, short line out from the Pirates, but it's been one again over the top from Melville. Just inside the 22 at the moment. Ball comes back there to Brockett, and he'll find touch. Midway 10 metre line, 22. Temperature is just cha chopping and changing quite a bit. I'm the only one who's got a jersey on today, but uh, when that sun comes out, which it just has, thank you to Gal Carl Gallagher for telling me <coughs> changing change numbers. It's a good boost there from Cash One. This has been a couple of line outs, one against the throw, therefore Parkinson. He's got a couple of numbers outside him, but he goes himself inside the 22. A couple of metres now. They've had quite a bit of possession and territory at the moment. The men from Pukekohe. An advantage being clean, called. And in from the side is the call for their fourth. Tap and go quick. Does Christy, the captain. Still going. Got some support with him. The it's for Tatsunu. Now for O'Shea, the man... That doesn't have to worry much about it here. And Melville calling for the penalty, and they get. It's no releasing. And the tackle. And a chance to clear their own line. And it's a pretty decent nudge. Line out throw will take place 7 metres outside their own 22 be a 5 man line out at the moment, 2 out is the call from Malville the wind's died down a bit will this help Markland now it won't go over the top one there by Roach and it's not straight as the throw both teams having some issues at lineouts at the moment. It's a good crowd here at Collins Road. Melville is a well supported club in the Wakato competition. The club just south of the uh, city centre here in Hamilton. The round two match of the under 85 KG National Club Cup. Was, uh, big name one of the patrons of this competition is Sir Graham Henry to have a name like that supporting this competition is great and I think uh, too this is where the growth of rugby really needs to happen um, get, you know getting the smaller guys weight wise in, and um, I tell you what having done a few games in the past including a previous um, round two match of this competition between Fraser Tech and Grammar Tech, nothing soft about them. They still hit hard, play hard, uh, probably drink drink just as hard after the match. Scott Waldrum, uh, for, former Hurricanes player, still playing. Uh, you, you know, plays in this grade down in Wellington. As the scrum sit, sits there for Tatsunu but it's a second reset of the scrum can't have rugby without resets is what I say 
Uh, the saying too, if you're new to the broadcast and you n never heard me commentate before, uh, English language is the second hardest language in the world. Front row is definitely the hardest to understand. Unless you played there, uh, don't think really I I anybody knows what goes on. Having refereed rugby for 15 years, I still have no clue. Scrum this time for Tatsunu. Steady this time. Goes left. Good break there from Keshwan. And, oh, it's been cleaned up by Melville, though. And they'll go right. Good kick through from Sean Walker. Been picked up there. Reedy. Bit of a Gary Owen goes under, but he's claimed it himself, and it might have just been knocked on by Melville co player coming through as well. So Pirates still have it. Buckingham goes in. F the four metres Melville side of halfway. There for Bidwar. Tatsuno goes left. There's a break here from Keshwan. Fires it back inside, does he? No, he hangs on to it, but uh, some driving defence from Melville, and they're into touch. Well, Pukekohe Pirates look confident there of breaking the line, and they did, but Melville covering very well in the end. Still nil all here, just after 11 minutes. Hopefully you're enjoying the action. Do let us know in the comments. Can't guarantee I'll get round to them during the stream, but I will uh, go back and see what's being said after the match tonight. While, we, while I sit down and watch the uh, All Blacks taking on Australia in Game 2 of the Bledisloe Cup, Round 1 action of the Rugby Championship as well tonight, coming from Eden Park. Australia looking to make men, uh, amends of last week's uh, defeat. Maybe their first one in my lifetime at Eden Park. I certainly hope, hope not, though. And it's another line-out one against the throw. It'll be about the fifth one this game. Being that Christie has it, gives it off to Parkinson. Doesn't give it off to Cathcart, though. Hangs on to it, just a metre short of Melville's 22. Tatsuna goes right there for Widdevin. And it's still in the possession of the Pirates. Tatsuno goes to Scott Hooper, we're in the headgear. Christie with a dummy, show and go. Gives it off to Buckingham. Now it's quick hands there, now it's out to Mishy Mish. About a metre inside the 20, inside the Melville 22 now. And there's a little knock on. Well, Pirates have had all the position and territory at the moment. Play has been going their way, but Melville just managing to scramble at the right time. Soaking up the pressure. This competition last year was won, but won by the Eden Lizards. It's a pilot um, run version of the comp uh, due to COVID last year. Eden Lizards managing to defeat Auckland University Squids in that final at Eden Park. This year's final again will be at Eden Park on the 17th of September. Got a few weeks to go before then. There's a steady scrum here from Melville. Farland fires it off to Brockett and in the pocket. And finds touch. At 14 metres inside their own half stall. Always a bit of banter and laughter going on the sidelines in Melville. It's unusual to see, un unusual not to see it, sorry, I should say. Always friendly though, always friendly. Just got a stoppage and play for a bit of talking going on. Not sure what's happening, but uh, we'll go back and Bidwa still has it. Spokakoe joined the line out now, and it's one there by Buckingham. It's not straight though, it's a second one, one each in this match. That has 
that hasn't been straight. Neither the hookers, Jamie Bidwar for the Pirates, and Andre Markland have managed to find their mark. Scrum here for Melville as one of the kids here just asking what's going on and just telling her that it's uh, out live to Facebook. Everybody, the 68 people in Facebook land watching. There for McFarlane, finds Brockett. Dylan Brockett finds some support back with McFarlane, looks at his options, decides to go himself. He's over the halfway line now. Left now, therefore, Paiku being left behind, an advantage being played for a knock on from the Pirates. Chip back inside, and they'll come back to the knock on. Just a little knock on. It was a good break from Melville, though. Some, some, some early um, some possession finally for them after the first couple of minutes. They've got a scrum just a couple of metres on the Pukakori Pirate side of halfway. Apologies for the music that was coming through there just then. One man band and uh, commentary and doing the stream today. Uh, Simon is my cameraman. The buttons and that are being pushed by me as well as doing commentary. Stuff that I enjoy though. Great to have your company. And the third re scrum reset. It's going to be on the far side. Looking at Darren. Uh, look, looking at Sione Ashton and Zach Mawicki. The opposing. Props. <laughs> McFarlane feeds the scrum this time. There's good push on by Pukakoe though. They break off out there to Brockett. Goes right now with... Paiku, and one bite back by the Pirates, the second turnover of the match in general play, and it'll be another penalty. Penalty stacking up against Melville at the moment, 5-1 to the Pirates. At this stage... And a chance now for Christie to clear the line. Finds it 15 metres inside Melville's half. Don't think we've had one clean line out in this match so far as the Pirates are just talking about their options. So that's going to be another five man line out. Melville goes early. One there by Hooper, though, his second for the match. Comes out right. Their linking is Reedy. Coming in off, off the line. They'll still come right now through Sione Ashton. Caught up high. Manages to get to ground, though. Pirates player down injured. As there's a lot of d dummy runners and. Matt Martin says there's a man injured just close by. We will take a break in time and see what the issue is there. Hopefully he's okay. He's been lying on his uh, stomach for the last couple of minutes though. Not something you ever want to see in a game of rugby is injuries, but uh, contact sport, they do happen.
course, to the uh, rugby championship taking place in, uh, in uh, South Africa in the early hours of tomorrow morning. The home side playing Argentina. South Africa coming off a uh, good series win against the British and Irish Lions. Talking to a South African yesterday about things, and they said uh, one of the great things about the British and Irish Lions is that you, you know, when you win, you can hold it over for them for tw every. Uh, for the next 12 years until your side takes on of course the British and Irish Lions uh, only tour every four years between South Africa, Australia and New Zealand won't talk too much about the 2017 British and Irish Lions series here in New Zealand other than it was a good tour uh, the result of course was one apiece and the third match was we'll just say it was, uh, it, was a, it was a draw Everyone has uh, their opinions on whether that was a fair draw or not, but um, you know, as, as, a as any sport is, you have to go with what the referee says, whether you agree or disagree. Played in a few games where I can't say I've really disagreed with the referee myself, and uh, probably refereed a few games where teams, can't, teams weren't that happy with me either, so it happens in sport. It looks as though that player is going to get up and carry on. Can't see any changes to the Pirates team. So that's good because he was down for a while. And because Pukekohe Pirates had the ball when play was halted, they will feed this ball to the scrum to restart. Totsuno to feed. Good push coming in from Malville. The gun backwards is Pukakoi, but they still have it. Tatsuno fires it out to left to Christie. Christie giving it off to Keshwan. Inside the 22 at the moment is the Pirates. They'll come right. There for Bidwa. Shuffles it off now to Hooper, and it's an obstruction call. Melville's second penalty of the game. And they've Pukekohe Pirates have got to be careful there. That's the second time they've basically crossed in front of each each other with the player with the ball in hand at the back. Not being fair to the defensive side. And it will be Markland who will clear the line. Hopefully gain some metres upfield. They're just inside the 22 currently. Paul Redfern the assistant referee on the far side sticks his flag up. 14 metres still inside Melville half. And Melville have won up. Someone's finally won their own line out. They're nine metres inside their own half at the moment. There for Singers. So like McFarlane's going to go left again. Brockett fires it out wide. There for Hidden Tate. This is Midingi with ball in hand. And it's under a knock on advantage for Pukakoi. Just inside their own half. Melville win it back and they'll. Go to a scrum as it's a bit of a push and a shove. Both teams looking a bit uh, confident, and we'll there's push and shove going on all over the place. Not what is needed. It's been a pretty decent game. And Matt Martin says, "Let's just calm down, folks." Ever talk to the captains? And I'd say this is just a friendly chat, just to say there's no need for players coming in from all angles. And we'll play, play a penalty actually for pushing off the ball. And 
No, so fair enough, it's all about man management. Matt Martin was there on the spot. So the every right to um, call call what he saw. That's what he did. And it's only made 10 metres or so. The centre north sticks up his flag 13 metres inside. Matt Martin just having a talk to one of the sideline people about referee abuse. Nothing, it's um, not accepted at any level in any sport. As Bidwa's throw down to the back. One there, they'll go left now, all the Pirates, with Keshwan. And it's been spilled out there by the Pirates. And it's a knock on both ways. And it's going to be a pirate scrum. And it's just getting a little bit heated on the sideline. It's a game of rugby. As there's another pirates player just injured. Might be a bit of a hand or. Oh, might be some tape that's come off. 23 minutes gone. First half of the 2021 National Club Cup. Under 85 kilo competition between the home side Melville against the Pukekohe Pirates. So running repairs are done. And come back for the scrum. Just a heads up about the time that you seen see on screen. It is only a rough estimate. Uh, we're not Sky and don't do uh, don't hook it up to the referee's watch. So just just be mindful of that. If we uh, tied it full time. Go five minutes each way, golden point. Never count that out. The uh, other game, this competition I did, that I stated earlier between Grammar and Fraser Tech. Uh, I did go to golden point. Fraser Tech winning that one. Off there for Tatsunu. It's a couple of missed out passes there. Therefore, Parkinson being left behind and it'll be bottled into touch as the flag is up from Andrew North. And it will be a Pukekohe throw. That's a good tackle there that was made by one of the Melville players. But just ran out of room when they uh, had the ball in hand. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from, who you're supporting. Always good to see comments. I'll get round to them after the game more than likely. This one's scrappy from, again from the Pirates. It's there for McFarlane who get, breaks out of a couple of tackles. as though that's going to be Callum Hadfield that will have to go and play half and it's been knocked on from the Pirates it's turned into a bit of a messy game at the moment knock-ons all over the place and that's good reason for that and the penalties that have been flying seven in total uh, 25 minutes gone and they've all been fair penalties as well I will say That's the reason why the score is nil all. None of the penalties in uh, kicking, kicking territory for either side at this stage. Fourth scrum reset. on that far side that's been causing the issues at scrum time. Good scrum here from Pukeko. It seems to be the team that doesn't feed the ball and that gets a good scrum. Kick downfield by Malville. Cleaned up there by the number 15, Tyler Taylor Reddy. Gets back to his feet. They're just a couple of metres outside their own 22 at the moment is Pukeko. Their first time that they've been put under pressure. Since the early stages of the game, good brusting tackle there from Sean Walker. 
and Apiro goes the way of Melville for hands on the hands on the ruck, and they get their third of the match. See, T is asked for. It's a bit good kick for um, the Melville player. It's a couple of metres to the left hand uprights. And about 25 metres on the angle. Guys, who's doing the kick? Is it Carl? Is it Dylan? Yep. Stephen Markland, the kicker for Melville. Now that I can see the 15 on his back, there's quite a few players around. Can he open up the scoring here for Melville? It's a little bit of wind around, but nothing too frightening other than the sun's just a bit in his eyes. Takes a couple of steps back, comes in, strikes it, and off the uprights, it's still, so it's play on. Pukakoi clean it up. They've got to scramble now to get, their, to get the ball out of their territory. Comes back to Christie. And the ball is still going to be... Oh, it's just bounced about a millimetre short of the sideline. And bounced out three metres inside the... Um, half the assistant referee sticking up his flag. On halfway. Uh, ten. <laughs> I can help, but <laughs> just like <laughs> all good, mate. Someone asking me on the sideline how to go, how long to go in the uh, half. As the throw goes, one there by McFarlane. It's called to go backwards. It's having to take up the ball himself. Comes back to Brockett. Comes now through to Walker Poku. And it's gone backwards as Pukakoe have cleaned it up. They're a couple of metres inside Melville's half now. And one off runner. So it was Buckingham who's played 48 games so far for his side. Inside ball back to Whittavin. And Melville have won another penalty, not releasing in the tackle. And I'd say you can hear on what side that the broadcast is happening. Melville win a penalty and you hear the claps. They've absorbed, absorbed a lot of pressure from the Pukakoi Pirates side. They've had a lot of attacking opportunities already in the first 20 minutes. Now things have just levelled up a bit more. Melville second runners up in the Wakatu under 85 kilo competition that was taken out by Fraser Tech. Carl Gallagher on the sideline saying we don't talk about that. That's uh, probably because they lost on a try in full time. <laughs> I was going to anyway, guys. <laughs> Got to have something to talk about in commentary. Pukekohe Pirates are fifth in the county's Monaco competition. Markland goes down the back and it's one against the throw once more. It's Pukakoe have, have it. Comes back to Christie. Christie with a long ball out to Reedy. Comes out to the number 14 of Brody Cathcart. Trying to break out. Can't. Brought in a good tackle. Melville and chasing it and they don't get it. In from the side is the call. And goes against Melville. And come skews off the side side of his boot from Reedy. And only makes a couple of metres down towards the 10 metre line. Still inside Pukakoe's half. Can Boudoir 
get a throw for his team on the line out time. It's not straight, this one. Bit of disgruntled looks on the Pirates players' side faces, but um, it was definitely outside the shoulder. So, gorgeous looking puppy down here, sideline in front of me, wearing some Melville colours and cut out of a uh, training shirt by the sound of things. Polar fleece as well. Someone's done a really good job on that. Uh, did football a couple of weeks ago actually, and um, it was similar, similar things. Someone had cut a um, cashmere technical old jersey and uh, made that and put covered over the dog. And scrum is a little bit steep. Going backwards from Melville, they won it though. C comes to Brockett, therefore Walker. Brockett with ball in hand again. Nine metres inside Pirates half. Comes out to Walker. Looks at his options and just gets caught in a good tackle. And diving dive pass out to Stewart. Caught on the halfway line. Dion Weta to having to play half. No, it's McFarlane who does. Gets there and it's an advantage for a head high tackle against Brockett. And Matt Martin says, way too high guys. Because shoulder, shoulder, nothing above shoulder height, anything above that is a head high. Has been since day one of rugby pretty much. And Stephen Markland to make some metres. So let's go the long... The far side, with the hope to get a bit of wind, goes over the head of Missy Mish. It's a great touch finder from the Melville number 15. And they're five metres inside Pirates 22 at the moment. Melville slow to get to the line out. Both teams have been doing this, so fair play. Andre Markland, he's just got to find the mark here for his side, and then they, then they can look at their options. So Melville backs are all out left. It's won there by Caleb Hadfield. Goes to ground. One off runners now. Still there with Melville. And another one off runner. They're making some metres, the pick and go players. PNG, whatever you want to call it. McFarlane goes to the backs. Brockett trying to loop inside. One there by the Pirates player. Picked up off the ground. He's away as Gregor Christie gets around another. He is going to go 70 metres over the try line. And we're going to have the first try of this match. What against the run of play. And 5 0 Pukakoi lead. I was trying to look, Kath, who, who was asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I knew what it was. <laughs> Somebody asking me what, try, what number the try scorer was. Couldn't find the person. But it was alright. It was the Melville manager asking. And just before half time, Pukakoi lead 5 0 kick to come. As I said, it was really against the run of play. But capitalised on what was a loose ball from Brockett. And Melville came back and they tried to cover him, just couldn't. Had enough speed. And finally, someone's got try points on the board. Comes in, kicks it. It's not got the legs, the distance, or the accuracy. So the score will stay 5 0, three minutes to go, first half. Oh, 
long way to go in this game. It doesn't feel as though it's all, there's only been 38 minutes. It feels a lot longer than that. Some good rugby being played by both sides. As the restart goes long and be cleared back, kicked back into the field. Cleaned up there by Melville. And they'll go out to Maringa. Maringa looks, at it, looks for a hole, spots half of it, gets caught in a good tackle. Couple of metres inside Pukakoe's half. Fires it out to Gabe Peachy. Man who helps run the Melville 85's team. Does a great job of it too. Comes out to Dion Wedita. Oh, he gets in a good tackle, but manages to keep going a little bit. Now Brockett fires it out right to Caleb Hadfield. Now it's been left behind and into touch. Looks as though Melville were going to open up this game again and just couldn't quite get there. And Jamie Bidwar will have a throw to the line out 15 metres inside their own half. As that's a great take there by Jack Buckingham. And they rumble it up a couple of metres short of the 10 metre line. Still their side of halfway. Tatsunu goes to the to the foot. Taken down there by Harini Tate. Oh, gets out of a good tackle. And they'll come left. Does Melville. Oh, nice little pass there to Raven Paiku. He's got Stephen Markland on it with him, but he's knocked it on. It was a loose carry. And Pukakoe has it. And they're just going to try and secure this ball. Still got a minute left in this half. And they'll come right. Oh, it's a great tackle. Very good tackle to put down Makaida Parkinson. Might have been Meringi, Tamati Meringi, and it'll be a knock on. That's happened. And Melville will have a scrub feed. Well, all happening here at Collins Road just before half time. Last play is the call. Well, I would say Melville, you know, old cliche, score before half time, take the momentum going into the break. I think they'd take even just um, the, the score line the way it is at the moment. It's a very tight contest, this one. Round two of the 2021 under 85 kilo club cup. Good push in here from Pukakoi. McFarlane with another dive pass to Brockett. Who gives it off to Walker, who has to juggle as well. And it's under a penalty advantage. Dion Wedita with ball in hand. Comes out right to Stephen Markland, who's off the line. A couple of grass tackles being met. And Melville won there. Another penalty, leaving the feed as the call. And almost levelled up that penalty count. 7 6 it is. The way of Pukakoe at the moment. <laughs> and a chance to make some more metres and go to a line out. Great touch finder. Very good touch finder. It's found touch about six metres out from the Pukakoe line. And Melville, you can't blame them from taking their time. And just walking to the line out. The flags are still waving of the assistant referees there. 
And it's one from Melville, although it's going to be knocked on, I think. Pukekoe have won this, and I'd say they'll just kick it into touch and say, let's get go to the Oranges. And that is what they do. It is half time here at Collins Road, round two of the 2021 National Under 85 KG Club Cup. It is Pukekoe, the visitors, leading five over Melville nil. We'll take a short break, not on the stream, obviously, but commentary wise, put some music on. Come back, second half action happening very soon.
All right, second half action of the 2021 round two under 85 kilo national club cup competition. It is the home side. Melville against the men from County's Monaco, Pukekohe Pirates, who are leading 5-0. The restart of the second half goes down, cleaned up by Ryan Patterson. And it ends up in the hands of Tamati... In the, in the hands of uh, Missy Mish, number 11 from Pukekohe, but just knocked on in the tackle. It'll be a scrum. My name is Bevan Jenkinson. Great to have your company along for this one. As I've said throughout the broadcast, do let us know where you're tuning in from, who you're supporting. Can't promise you that I'll get round to the comments during the match, but I will read afterwards. Simon, Simon is my cameraman today. Once I find my words. Well, the scrums have got generally gone quite good from the team, not without, not with the feed. This is a case. Pukeko is a good push on. Melville won it though. There hasn't been a tight head in this game. There for Brockett. Now Walker, ducking and diving in and out. McFarlane going right. Finding some runoff runners with Castro. Ball in hand, meeting a good tackle. There will be a highlights package posted to uh, Bev's broadcasting Facebook page afterwards. So McFarlane goes for the box kick. Down towards Missy Mish. Finds Reedy with ball in hand. And Reedy plugs into one of the corners. It's gone out on the full though. It is out in the full. Andrew North, the assistant referee, far side, says we'll go back to where he's kicked it from. And Melville will have a line out. Ten metres short of the Pukekohe Pirates 22. Only one try in this match to the Pirates captain, Gregor Christie. And that was actually out of a Melville mistake that we know what on attack. Pukekohe were looking good earlier on. Oh, ball goes over the top. And it's been knocked on. But Matthew Martin, who's had a decent game today, says the throw wasn't straight. And I've lost count. I've run out of pieces of paper to write down mistakes at line out. Today from either side, it has been scrappy. I believe maybe two have been run by the team throwing the ball. So, so Tatsunu, who's had a good game as well at halfback, both halves have had a very good, strong game so far. And a reset, first one of the second half. Scrum time. Just a reminder that uh, this game is a knockout match, so we do need to find a, find a winner. If it's locked up at, at full time, we go five minutes each way, golden point. Seen that once at least already in this competition this year. Fraser Tech managing to come back from 17 5 down at half time, and they kicked a penalty a drop goal actually just on half time of golden point to beat Grammar Tech. The Grammar Tech sides, right, break off there from the number eight Roach, gives it to Tatsunu and it's gone into touch. But there's an offside penalty being called and it's be the first one of the second half. Pukekohe's eighth of the match. And Reedy finds touch just a couple of metres, five metres actually, inside Melville's half. Hopefully enjoying this action. Plan is to bring more of the 2021 under 85 kilo National Club Cup knockout competition. This game's been played all over the country today. North Harbour, Auckland, today in Hamilton, here in Hamilton. Wellington as well. There was a game at 10.30 this morning being played at Forsyth Bar in Dunedin. And this one's been 
one and it's cleaned up by Melville. Pukakoe did win the line out but they just didn't clean it up. There is Zach Moeki breaks, takes a couple of players with him. Eight metres inside the half. Another one off runner but he's been caught up high. Manages to get to ground though. Matthew Martin says balls on the ground. We'll play on. Brockett with it from McFarlane. Oh, he's just having to juggle. Does Sean Walker? And he's just on put on their own side of halfway. There for Dion Wedita. He's made a good low tackle. Gets to his feet though. Wasn't held. And they'll go left when the ball is there. No one blind. As Matt Stewart breaks off. Brought in a tackle on the halfway line. As the ball was not out, is what Matthew Martin says. Player came round. And Sean Walker goes quick with the tap. It's another advantage being played. Where it's brought in a low tackle. Pukakoe had been really good on the low tackles. And time off is called from Matthew Martin. He's just having a talk to the Pukakoe captain. He's not happy about something there. Penalties eight apiece in this game now. And it looks as though Markland will make some metres. And a line out time. I'm quite surprised with the issues both teams have had at line out time that they are still kicking for touch. Saying that the territory is an important game. Doesn't matter which end of the ball, which end of the um, field you're at though, you still need the ball to score a try. Andre Markland is, it's one, there's second, there for Brockett, now Walker, it's not going to go to Paiku though, it's going to go himself, stripped there from the Pirates, and Pukakoe have got it, there now with Reedy, just on the 22 metre line, their own, and it'll be one off runner. As Bidwa goes in, and it's a penalty. As they go quick through, Nat Stewart, finding five metres inside P Pukakoe's 22 now. They go right through Patterson. Still looking to go right. Brockett with it. Caught in a good tackle. Gets the ground though. McFarlane going left for Gabriel Peachy. And another penalty. Leaving the feet is the call. As the Pukakoe Pirates captain being pulled out to talk to now. I would say it's just getting too dangerous in the red zone. And they're going to have to watch their discipline. And scrum called from Melville. Biggest concern, I think, for the home side is that they've only got three on the bench uh, due to injuries and a funeral. I know Hamilton Old Boys had to default uh, their match in the National Club Cup due to uh, having too many injuries and couldn't field a side, which is a bit of a shame. to have the second reset the scrum's just not steady walking all over the place conditions are still pretty good the sun is out keeping everything warm there's a good breeze too just coming from basically over the scrums 
over the scrum here into the camera position to, or to, to the left of the camera position actually where I am in the uh, trailer here at Collins Road as Pukakoe get a good shunt on it's gone all over the place but Melville win it it's there for Brockett like having to get rid of one of their pl own players as Stuart Paul pops up all over the place ends up in Castro's hands don't know how someone did not knock that ball on but it was well done to all those players now it's Wedita with ball in hand hasn't looked like passing he just seems to be a ball carrier and doing the job well there for Paiku now it's for Markland Stephen Markland as Pukakoe going hunting for it and they'll get the penalty well Markland just ran out of support no one with him And Pukakoe get get out of jail with their second penalty this half. And the ball is it's got to stay in field. It's been tapped in from Sean Walker. Goes back and cleans it up. Kicks it across field though. I don't think that was the right option. Lands in the hands of Cathcart. Now it's with Parkinson. Off to Reedy. Now it's back to Cathcart. Pukakoe looking dangerous. And it's been knocked on by one of the Pirates players. They were looking a hot and dangerous and broken play. It's how the, first, how the only try of the match came. And Melville have it. And Melville looking to run it out from their own, own posts. It's there for Hidden Tate who bangs it downfield. Where's the ball? It bounce. That's the ball going to go. Doesn't go favourably, and he's knocked it on. Now it's with Reedy finding some support through Darren O'Shea. Now it's there with Scott Harper. Scott Harper with ball one uh, one uh, hand on it. When I find the words, <laughs> getting some help from the crowd. That's okay though. Tatsuno. Now with Buckingham and Melville getting the penalty, not releasing. And they get to finally breathe a sigh of relief for there. What I was trying to say with one hand on it was a bit like uh, Colin Meads. That carry. From the number six. I'd love to know what someone like Colin Meads would have been able to do in a game like in today's game. Oh, the touch finder can't, isn't there. Pirates have it. They're looking at their options. Oh, it's made a good crunching tackle. Had a lot of time with it. And it's, I know it's an old saying, and even Carl Gallagher would know this saying because he plays cricket himself. They're just too much time with ball in hand, I think. <laughs> too much time to think about it. So Melville have a scrum, 11 metres inside their own half, centre of the field. Twelve eight, Peter Mahawi are leading College Rifles. Thank you to Annette Tossel. Thanks very much supporting Pukekohe in this game. If you can keep us updated, Annette, that would be great. Just managed to have a look at the New Zealand rugby page and seen your comment there. It's the Pirates who lead 5 0 currently. Just having to shift the field. A lot of the front rowers just having to clean the sprigs. Darren O'Shea looks as though he dyed his hair this morning. One of the great things about uh, the under 85s is that it allows you know players that are that would still want to play rugby that or want to play competitive rugby the opportunity to. Uh, Scott Wardrum, as I said, late 30s. Although, you know, Counties Monaco's <laughs> number 20 last uh, number 19 last night, Nili Latu, at the uh, young age of 39, still playing rep representative rugby. 
Went to school with uh, Lily Latu a few years ahead of me. Former, former Tongan captain. Great to see. As an Auckland supporter, I won't mention that he uh, also helped lift the Ranfley Shield off Auckland in 2004. <laughs> for Bay of Plenty. NPC action underway. Second round of NPC, I think it's the fifth round of um, Far Palmer Cup as well. Wakato home against Wellington, both sides playing Wellington tomorrow at FMG Stadium Wakato. As Joe McFarlane feeds ball. Counties went down last night to North Harbour. As oh, it's a great scrum from Pukekohe, their second big one. It's that ball in hand. Brockett now, over the 10 metre line. And it spills out now as McFarlane boots it downfield. Reedy allows the ball to bounce. And he's 12 metres short of the halfway line. Still there with Pirates. And a chip through from Christie. Picked up there from Meringi, Meringa. And it's ended up in the Pirates' hand. Now it's a break there from one of the Fords, and he's been bundled into touch as Melville cover just in time. Pukekohe have had definitely the most chances on attack. And thankfully it's just been, uh, for the Melville side I should say, thankfully they've managed to cover right at the right time as well. Line out take place five metres short, uh, just outside the 22. One there by Scott Hooper. Actually, so on the Pukekohe side, so they have another attacking chance. Out to Missy Mish. Melville trying to turn it over, they can't. Now it's with Christie. Player brought down on the 22 metre line. And Tatsuna goes right. Christie chip puts the ball on hand, boot. Cleaned up by Melville. And it's down to Reedy. Reedy having to go back. And it's been knocked on. Well, that's the second time Pukekohe have made a mistake just without the pressure on them. They do say pressure does funny things to people, especially in a sporting environment. So we see some substitutions coming on. Long way to go in this game, 18 minutes into the second half. This looks as though Brendan Singers is coming onto the field. Wearing the number five. Coming off is Adam Cathro. The captain who just looks a little bit ginger and maybe a hand injury as well. Great to have your company along for this. My name's Bevan Jenkinson on camera is Simon. <laughs> Pleasure to have your company wherever you're watching and whoever you're supporting as well. Even if you're a neutral supporter, nothing wrong with watching game of rugby, a decent game of rugby like this one has been. Scrappy at times, but still a good game of rugby uh, to watch as a neutral supporter. McFarlane feeds the ball in. Goes left as it's Stephen Markland off the line. Put down just short of the halfway line. And short of the 10 metre line, sorry. 
and it's been <laughs> won illegally from the Pukekohe Pirates player. It spilled out a couple of times, but in the end it was an offside that was being called. It's quite warm temperatures at the moment. This can't have had any tape. Closest to his side takes some sips of water. And great touch finder here from Stephen Markland. It's uh, six litres inside Pukekohe's 22. That wind is still about, as you can see on Andrew North's touch flag. Lineouts haven't been quite as bad as what it was in the uh, first half. We had probably 10 lineouts and only one of them was won by the team throwing in. It was either not straight over the top or knocked on. But what can Andre Markland do? There's a lot of talk going on at lineout time. And Matthew Martin cleans it up. And oh no, it's going to be one against the hit, against the throw. It's not backed by Pukekohe. And a chance now for Christie to clear his own line, is it? Oh, Tatsunu has, has to take it into the tackle himself. And they go again. Christie puts boot to ball. And oh, it's a great touch finder under some immense pressure there. And finds the, finds the sideline on the 22 metre line. Winner of this match will play Moransville on August 28th, they're saying. Not sure, it will depend on the result to probably where that game is played. And oh, it's one again against the throw as Devin Gardner playing his second game for the Pirates cleans it up. Now it comes back to Christie, and Christie can make some more metres, can he? And it was under penalty advantage, and offside is the call at line out time. And Pukekohe have their 10th penalty. Now all that winning. Uh, leading that statistic at the moment. They've been awarded 11. <laughs> and it'll be actually Taylor Reedy who will make some metres. Both fullbacks seem to have a bit of a bigger boot than their first fives. That's right, that happens in a game of rugby. There's a couple of subs warming up for Melville. They've only got a small bench today due to injuries and funerals. As we finally get a ball back. <laughs> and it'll be the second one, one, again, one for the throw for the Pirates. They'll have it in the middle of the field. Still 12 metres inside their own half though. Tatsuno goes right. Out to Buckingham. Tatsuna goes left this time. Christie shapes the kick. Gets charged down. It was a good charge down, but it's going to be cleaned up by Christie himself. Ball still loose. Sean Walker is there. No, he's not. It's actually been picked up by one of the Pirates players. 
They've done really well to get back there. They've had to scramble just as good as uh, what Melville has at times. And it is Tatsunu from the base of the ruck does the box kick. We go back to where we were a couple of minutes ago on the 22 metre line. Great to see the kids are down here as well in full voice. Enjoying themselves by the look of things. Plenty of Coke and Sprite around. That'll keep them uh, hydrated. Any kid would on a good Saturday afternoon at rugby. Nothing like club rugby in New Zealand. Here's the throw from Andre Markland. Off the top. Farlin Can't do much with it. Now it's Gabriel Peachy having to go off the base of the ruck. Makes a few metres inside the 22. On, now it's with Moeki. McFarlane fires it out to Brockett. He's had some really difficult ones today. It's Tamati Meringa having to clean up. Now Wereta plays half back. Now Walker with it. Watson held in the tackle, so he gets up and carries on. Is Paiku fires it off to Stephen Markland. And McFarland going in there at Paiku now. Fires it to Brockett. He fires it over the top. It's there for Tamati Meringa. And he's an advantage for him head high. Pukakoi are going to be have to be very careful. Those head high tackles. So that would be a penalty only though. Matthew Martin, the man from North Harbour, doing a very good job today. Some interesting warm-up skills being shown. Wedita has it. They've, instead of going for touch, they've tapped and goad. Wedita's been very good with ball in hand in his carries. Came on early in the first half. They come right. Now Brockett. Brockett spots a hole. And the pass is just hit one of the Pirates players. And the second time it's a knock on. As some substitutions have come onto the field. Carl Gallagher, Carl Gallagher and Tiari Wirara. Wiari. Coming onto the field for Melville. As Andre Markland comes off the field. with one of the other it might be uh, Ryan Patterson that's had to come to the come to the sideline and Pukakoi Pirates will have a scrum feed five metres inside their own 22 just to the left hand uprights You look at it from the from the position and scrum race set number three for the half. Low scoring affair, but the attacking has been all over the place today. The try came from a loose pass from Brockett. He's trying to wrap. It's one of his players went to ground and Christie picked it up. 15 metres outside is 15 metres out from his own posts. It was covered by Melville, but in the end, Christie had too much pace. That's been the only scoring action this game. Melville did have a penalty chance that they missed. Ended up coming off the uprights, both of those in the first half. The score remains 5-0. Just over 12 minutes to go in this game. A reminder again that this is a knockout match. Must have a winner. Golden point, five minutes each way if needed. Doesn't come down to boundaries though, folks. Don't worry about that. There is a similar rule, but uh, there's a few other markers 
that have already been ruled out uh, due to a try being scored in this match. I think if I look at my notes right, uh, most tries, first try, um, if there were, if there's, you know, if the, um, tries, the number of tries is equal. After that's uh, first penalty or drop goal and then uh, goes to the away team in the National Club Cup competition of the under-85s. Great to be bringing you the action here. Tatsunu feeds the ball. Good push from Pukakoi. Christie gets boot to ball. Plays the territory game. He's had to give the ball back to Melville. But this is... Uh, Come back from a bit further away, thank you. Touch finder, 10 metres, still inside. Pukakoe's half. If you are interested in becoming a referee, get in touch with your local provincial union or club. They'll put you in touch. Referees are always needed. Great way to see the game too if you're unable to play. As Melville win a line out. There for Wedita. It runs in, bumps off one. Has to take three, get three to take him down. As there's a little chip through, but it's down there to Reedy. Not the greatest option by Meringa. And it's a good little kick behind, and it makes Melville have to go, have to backpedal. And it's a line out on the Melville 10 metre line. <laughs> Sun's gone here at Collins Road behind it, some clouds. Might get some rain later on, I think. The city of Hamilton. As the throw goes down, oh, it's been won by Pukakoi. Some of these 50-50 things, most of these 50-50s, like that penalty, goes the way of them. Hands in the ruck is the call. To say though, Matt Martin was there. Sometimes you just do wonder what goes through a player's head. When a ruck is quite obviously formed like that. And a chance now for Reedy to gain some more territory. No, guys, guys, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Just a bit of um, issue, te technical issues with the charger. It'll be fine, though. Camera charger came out <laughs> as the ball is loose. It's with Pukakoe though. They've won their third line out of the match. It's Hamish Nichols who's on the field now. And Melville with a penalty, not releasing. Do apologise if any of the. Uh, Interesting, lang colourful language comes through in commentary. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about that, sorry. <laughs> Anyone who, who's involved in Wakato rugby knows that Melville are very passionate supporters of their club. I think there might have just been a little stoppage there for a little injury as they tap and go from their own 22 metre line does Melville decides line outs aren't the greatest option as Ryan Patterson makes some metres down a few 5 metres short of the halfway line as some rain is coming in wow I thought it would come in a bit later but it has now so it's there for Te Ari Wede Wede 
People having to come into the trailer here to get out of the rain, which they're more than welcome to. <laughs> Melville's still with the ball in hand. Oh, it's a loose pass, but they're coming back to a penalty. Folks, if you want to come into the trailer, you can. Yeah. I'm not too sure people actually realise they are more than welcome to come into the trailer. <laughs> they, uh, I think it scares them when there's uh, commentary and someone talking, <laughs> pretending to they know what they're talking about. There's <laughs> Melville looking at some options. And, oh, uh, no! Stephen Markland has made the, s the simplest of errors. All he had to do was tap it and pick it up, and he's knocked it on. And the look on the look of grimaces all over on the Melville side. It's not just one, there's a few. <laughs> and Pukekoe have a scrum. Well, scoreboard clock says four and a half. I say five and a bit left in this match. Just a reminder with time and law, we're always in the hand of the referee. It's Totsuno. Has the ball five metres inside his own half, middle of the field. Pukakoi scrum the second half has been great. Totsuno with boot, boot to ball. Goes through and it's just going to dribble into touch. Couple of, just on the 22. That's where Andrew North sticks his flag up. Great option there from Tatsunu. Just makes Melville have to play the ball a bit deeper in their own territory. His line out throw is. Oh, there's a knock on there from Pokakoi, so Melville leave it. About five metres inside their own 22. As it's there for Wiari. Now it looks as though Melville might go left. They will. They're going to keep ball in hand with Brockett, who's knocked it on, but Matthew. Martin says we'll go back to the line-out knock-on from Pukekohe first. Just, o just over three minutes to go in this match. It's been a great one from Collins Road. Pukekohe Pirates leading 5-0 over Melville currently. Been great to have your company along, company with you to bring this one round two of the 2021 National Club Cup, Cup National Club Cup under 85 kilos is, is a scrum reset as Pukekohe were having a good push on again. Being a weighted division it's not like um, it really does come down to weights as it would in an open weight comp. Winner of this game, a reminder, plays Moronsville on the 28th of August. That's what we've been told. They will play the winner of Moronsville. Uh, the winner will play Moronsville. Just uh, that round does need to wrap up by the 28th, the third round. Steady there. Melville with a good scrum. McFarlane, Brockett, Walker. Walker held up and a good tackle. Looks as though Christie's in there. The captain from Pukekohe gets to ground, though, does Melville. They're having a run it from their own uprights. Here's Matt Stewart with ball in hand. One off runner. 
Oh, that might have been peachy there. And now Neville with Wirata. And it just doesn't look as though Melville have got too many options at the moment. Peachy not being able to go anywhere with ball in hand there. Now Brockett off to Brendan Singers. As it's ended up with Pukakuri Private Pirates through Adam West Stevens and Melville have also knocked it on. And some frustration being shown by both sides and the supporters. So reason why I said earlier on it's an easy game to watch as a neutral. Fascinating game of rugby. So reason why people love the under 85 kilo competition. As I said earlier, Melville were runners, runners up to Fraser Tech in the Wakatu competition due to Tech managing to score a try and kicking the conversion on full time just under a month ago <laughs> I think it might have been the third time I said that <laughs> funny enough I think all three times I've said it uh, hasn't been appreciated by the Melbourne supporters <laughs> as it's there for Tatsunu fires it off to Taylor Reddy and the Pukakoi Pirates